Hey up everyone, welcome back to my channel. Hope you're all well and you're looking after yourselves during this coronavirus pandemic. Today's video is going to be a Parramatta team, but it's going to be a Parramatta team comprised of 17 players that the club has let go and have gone on to either do better things with their career, win premierships, play for Australia, New South Wales, Queensland, whatever have you. So I'm going to be going through this team. 1 through the 17, starting with the fullback, going through the wings, up to the forwards, and I'm going to be maybe throwing in a couple of other players as well. With Parramatta, especially over the last 20 years, because this team is going to be comprised of players only in the NRL period, uh, with Parramatta, they've been one of the clubs that has had the most poor recruitment and retention program in the league. I think the only other club that cl comes close to that is West Tigers. Over the last couple of years, Parramatta has kind of improved, but in those early 2000s, all the way through to maybe a couple of years ago, our club was very poor in uh, recruitment, retention, who to, who to let go, who to sign. So it was very frustrating as a Parramatta fan to see players that you let go and then go on to do great things with other clubs and you go I wish that could be the case with my club and here we are still no premiership 34 year on but anyway I'm going to try to make this video as nice as possible as upbeat as possible I don't want to get too depressed and too down in the dumps so before I start the video I'd also just like to see Thank you to everyone that subscribed to the channel. Welcome to all the new subscribers. I got plenty of content out there for you. And I just want to see a quick hi to all the older subscribers, people that have been there from the start. And if you get a spare moment, head over to Rugby League History. That's my Facebook page. Uh, I put a link in the description below. Go check that out. Some great nostalgia, great memories, great photos. So in this Parramatta team of players that they've let go and gone on to do other things. I'm going to start with the fullback now. And the player that I've chosen at fullback is Brett Hodgson. So Brett Hodgson, he came to the club to us from Western Suburbs. He played in the 2001 Grand Final for us and scored two tries in that match as we lost to Newcastle. He played one more season, I think, and then he was quickly shifted over to West Tigers where he ended up becoming a club legend there. Played at fullback in their 2005 Premiership winning side. And he continued to get selected for New South Wales. And he was one of the most reliable fullbacks in the league. And we could have really used someone like Brett Hodgson because in the mid-2000s we didn't really have a star fullback. We had Wade McKinnon, who he did, he did his job, but he was no superstar. And uh, occasionally we had Luke Bate filling in at fullback, but he was more of a winger, I think. So we, we really could have used a Brett Hodgson in the mid-2000s. On the left wing, this one's a big one. This is Pat Richards. So Pat Richards, he played for us in the early 2000s. But after a couple of years with us, he had a couple of injuries. Um, he was shifted over to West Tigers. From what I've read, and this is actually coming from someone that was very close to the club at the time, they said that Brian Smith sat him down and said, I think it's better if you focus on your cricketing career than being a rugby league player because you're just not cut out for it. If you didn't know, Pat Richards was actually a very good cricket player as well as a rugby league player. Anyway, he went over to West Tigers and he was part of that 2005 Premiership winning squad. He scored that try off the Benji Marshall flip pass. Then he went over to England, won several awards over here. Man of Steel, kicked all kinds of crazy goals, field goals, scored all kinds of crazy tries. Come back to West Tigers and was still a handy player for him. So I bet you every time Pat Richards took the field, he said, this one's for you, Brian Smith, for seeing I'm not good enough. At left centre, this one's a... Pretty controversial one. Most people wouldn't agree with me, but I'd say Jamie Lyon is my left centre in this team. So Jamie Lyon, 
He was a superstar for us, part of that 2001 grand final team. He also had some really good years with us and then all of a sudden he just disappeared, he vanished. And I remember at the time uh, there was rumours that he was homesick or there was something else wrong with him. Anyway, long story short, he ends up over in England playing with St Helens and then he comes back to Australia from England and he signed with Manly. Ends up playing over 200 matches for the club. Um, I've heard several rumours as to why he left Parramatta. Uh, some of them sound a bit far-fetched, some of them seem pretty credible. But I think that the, the, the way that Parramatta handled the, the entire situation, they, I mean, they could have done it better. They could have really done it better. And I think the f we really missed someone like Jamie Lyon in our team for years afterwards. So it was a massive blow for him to go and end up winning premierships and being a star at another club. At right centre, Willie Tonga. So Willie Tonga played for us, I think, for one year, 2003, and at the end of that, Brian Smith took him aside and said, sorry mate, I just don't think you're going to cut it out at Parramatta, so we're going to let you go. Anyway, our arch rivals Canterbury signed him for 2004, and in that one year, he ended up winning a premiership, playing for Queensland and playing for Australia. And then after that, he was one of the, the uh, prime centres in the game. He ended up going to North Queensland, and then, in typical Parramatta fashion, we buy him back when he's coming towards the end of his career and has all those injuries. But I think if we just would have persevered for him for a bit longer, we could have had a star centre. We could have had someone that we could have uh, had in the team week in, week out. But unfortunately, he ended up at Canterbury, North Queensland, and he ended up starring for them. So, not a good situation for us. Uh, at the right wing... I've gone for Jarrell Yao Yi. So most of you will be thinking, Jarrell Yao Yi, he never played for Parramatta. Well, he was actually a Parramatta junior. He, he come down from Queensland because he wasn't uh, getting considered up there. Um, he played one or two years in the juniors with us. And then Rod Reddy, who was one of our recruitment managers, pulled him aside and said, you're too small and you're never going to make first grade. So... Jarrell Yao Yi went back up to Queensland, thought about quitting rugby league, and then that's when he gained the attention of Brisbane, who signed him. He ended up becoming a Queensland and Australian star. If he wouldn't have got that career-ending injury, I reckon he would have been still playing now, one of the one of the best wings, one of the best backs in the game. And uh, I mean, I know it sounds cruel, but I think on for for our sake, it's kind of good that he did get that injury because. We would have looked really red-faced if, if he would have continued on the same trajectory that he was on. In the halves, I've gone for James Maloney and Trent Hodkinson. So with James Maloney, most of you would be thinking, he never played for Parramatta either. Well, we actually signed him in 2008 and he played for our feeder club, Wentworthville. And he was part of that Wentworthville club that won the 2008 New South Wales Cup. Um, with James Maloney, the year after, he, he was shifted over to Melbourne. We got shot of him. And then the rest is history. Went on to team New Zealand over a grand final. Won the Premiership with Eastern Suburbs in 2013. And he won Cronulla, their first ever meeting Premiership in 2016. He also played for New South Wales and Australia. Uh, it's another case of the one that got away. We, I mean, we should have really... Looked at James Maloney, seeing what he did with Wentworthville, and signed him, signed him on for a contract. But obviously, the recruitment at the time didn't see that. And with Trent Hodkinson, he played uh, juniors for us, SG Ball, Harold Matthews. He also played under 17s, I think, for New South Wales. He was never even considered for us, despite coming through the coming through the grades and doing really well. He ended up going to Manly. Ended up going to Canterbury, ended up winning a State of Origin series for New South Wales, and you look back on it, and we've always sort of struggled for a, for a decent halfback in the past, and I think if we just would have persevered or given Trent Hodkinson a go, who knows? The props have gone for Kylie Lulawai and Joe Nullivau. So Kylie Lulawai 
he played for a few clubs before he got to us. But he only played the one season for us and we got shot of him. He ended up coming over here to Leeds in England and he ended up winning six premierships over here. And with Joe Nullival, we signed him from South. He was a premiership winner beforehand with Penrith. And he was part of our 2009 grand final side that lost against Melbourne. The next year, we got shot of him. He ended up going to Manly. And he ended up winning the 2011 premiership with Manly. But considering the players that we bought in after the 2009 grand final, the likes of Carl Webb, Sheen, Shackle and players like that, and we let go of someone with the experience and uh, the good forward play that Joe Mulvow had, I'll never know because it, it really... It really went against us, didn't it? Uh, in the second rows, I've gone for Andrew Ryan and Tony T-Rex Williams. So, Andrew Ryan started his career with us, part of that 2001 grand final loss against Newcastle. And in 2003, we ended up releasing Andrew Ryan and he went to Canary Bankstown where he ended up becoming a legend of their club. He ended up winning the Premiership in 2004, he ended up captaining Canterbury and he ended up playing New South Wales and Australia for Canterbury as well. Um, I think Andrew Ryan's probably one of the most major players that we've let go on the list so far. And with Tony Williams, Tony Williams was a winger that started his, started his career with us and uh, we ended up getting rid of him after only a couple of years and then he went to Manly where Des Hasler turned him into at the time one of the best forwards in the competition at the time he was highly rated I, I know it sounds a bit daft now and you're kind of thinking best one of the best forwards in the competition what are you on about Dean well back then he back then actually Tony Williams was a good player Des Hasler turned him, in, turned him into a good player he ended up playing State of Origin he won a premiership with Manly in 2011 and in true Parramatta fashion, just like uh, Willie Tonga, we bought Tony Williams when he was a lot older, injury prone. And then we ended up sacking him for drugs related charges. So another great recruitment move from Parramatta. At lock, I've got Paul Gallen. Pa uh, most of you would see Paul Gallen. He never played for Parramatta. Well, he played juniors for us. He played SG Ball for the club. And in, in, an, in, in an interview a few years later, he ended up coming out and seeing that he was a Parramatta junior, that he was never really given a go by the club. And then he was formed by someone that he knew down in Cronulla, and he ended up going down there. And, well, 348 matches later, Premiership, New South Wales, Captain, Australia, etc., etc. You get the point. And at hooker, I've gone for Kevin Kingston. So Kevin Kingston was part of that 2009 grand final loss. But in the off-season after that, we ended up getting rid of him. So instead of getting rid of Matt Keaton, who I think wasn't in wasn't one of the best hookers that we had, we got rid of Kevin Kingston, who I thought was a better player. He ended up going to Penrith, where he had quite a successful few years with them. And he ended up captaining uh, Penrith, but... I think especially in that early 2010 section of the of the uh, the decade, I think we really could have used someone like Kevin Kingston. We could have really used a good hooker like him, but we were stuck with Matt Keaton. So another great move by Parramatta. And on the bench, I've chosen Daniel Tupo, Todd Lowry, Dean Alatau and David Williams. So the first player on the bench, Daniel Tupo, he didn't play first grade for Parramatta either. He played juniors for us and then he played under 20s. He scored, I think, in his final year at Parramatta, something like 24. He played 24 games and scored something like 12, 13 tries. Obviously, that wasn't good enough for Parramatta. We ended up getting shot of him to Eastern Suburbs, where he's gone on to play over 160 matches, win three premierships and play for New South Wales, Australia, all that keeper. Todd Lowry, he was one of our unsung heroes from that 2009 grand final loss. 
After 2009, we ended up getting rid of him. He went to Melbourne where he won a premiership with them in 2012. I think considering some of the players that we brought in after that 2009 grand final, we could have really used someone like Todd Lowry. He, as I said, he was an unsung hero of the club. The third player on the list, Dean Halatau, he played in the Parramatta district as a junior. He was never really spotted by any, any of our talent scouts. He was ended up getting picked up by West Tigers where he played over 200 games for them and Canterbury Bankstown. And he was part of that 2005 NRL Grand Final victory over North Queensland. He also represented New Zealand about 15 times, I think just off the top of my head. So a handy player, someone that we could have used. And the last player I'm going to add on the bench, David Williams. The Wolfman, he used to be a Parramatta junior. He played all through the grades. After he was there for a few years, Parramatta turned around and said, sorry, we do, we just don't think you're going to be a face greeter. You're not going to make it. He ended up going to Manly, where in his debut year, he became a cult hero of the club and he was part of that 2008 Premiership winning team. He ended up playing for New South Wales and Australia. He was unlucky not to win a second premiership with Manly and he ended up playing with them until 2015 when he when he retired due to ongoing injuries. But considering some of the players that we had in the early 2010s, we could have used a winger like David Williams and he could have been another court hero for us, like Fui Fui Moi Moi. So that's my team. That's my top 17 Parramatta players that we've let go. And they've gone on and done great things with other clubs. I will see an interesting fact that out of the out of the players that I've mentioned, thirteen of them went on to win a premiership at another club. So there's a lot of talent there. Goes to show that um, you can't keep them all. But in Parramatta's case, um, in hindsight, we could have with some of them, and we could have avoided signing some of the players that we ended up signing. So, anyway, that's a mouthful. That's my video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please consider giving the video a like. If you really, really liked it, give it a share. Share it with your friends and family, especially you Parramatta fans out there. Get, get their opinion on my video. Am, am I right? Am, am I wrong? Am I being a bit too harsh on, 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 on the club? You know, at the end of the day, I love this club. I love Parramatta. But, you know, it's like, it's like having a son or something like that. Sometimes you have to be, you have to be cruel to be kind. So, anyway, what else can I see? I think I've said everything. So, just make sure that you go and check out that uh, Rugby League History page that I wrote on Facebook. I'll put a link in the description below, as I said before. Sorry that I'm kind of stopping and starting and pausing on that. This video is kind of unscripted. I just come up with this list recently. I haven't really gone into it with any thought. This is just unscripted like most of my other videos, but today I'm a bit off the boil, I think, so bear with me. But anyways, I'll catch you all later. Look after yourselves, and I'll see you all around. Tara.